Okay, hello and good morning everyone. Welcome to JFD Traders Espresso with me, Darius Sundachowskas. Today is the 24th of April 2020. So, yep, welcome everyone. Welcome to this Friday's morning morning recorded session where we're going to have a quick look at the markets, a few of the charts, a few of the instruments, um, a few of the instruments that we looked at yesterday. So, yep, guys, as always, before we jump in, let's quickly have a read through our risk disclaimer. So, the content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. As always, a few seconds for you to read the rest. And we can continue. Okay, so also just before we jump in into the charts, quick mentioning of our JVD YouTube channel to which you can always subscribe to in order not to miss any of our upcoming videos. And of course, our JVD Bank website and specifically our JVD Research page, which you can find here if you go on jvdbank.com and click on the Research tab on the top there. And yep, it'll take you to this page. Uh, which we update on a daily basis. So, yep, I believe you can find something useful here, guys, for yourself. So, yep, uh, keep on checking us regularly because we do th throw out reports. Um, of course, we always throw out our morning report um, and then during the day our uh, separate technical analysis. Uh, so, yep, I, I like I said, I believe you can find something useful here. So, um, quickly, uh, a quick update on what's happening here. So, I need to update this number. Now that was the previous figure. Um, let's see how it performed uh, this week, um, or let's just let's say how it performed overnight. So not a huge increase. So that's good. Of course, the unfortunately the death toll continues to rise, but uh, not as significantly as it was. Let's say for example last week. So yep, guys. Um, Everything is kind of looking quite nice here. Uh, probably Europe is is right now um, going down, so U.S. is still struggling, but Europe is looking already better. Now, um, jumping into a few indices, I'm not going to spend too much time on the on all of these because although there's a lot of a lot of different uh, instruments here, but um, some of them are actually still in the same kind of. Uh, are still with the same idea as I've, I've dis as I've discussed uh, this week. So basically, going into the German DAX here, you can see that yes, it has risen yesterday a little bit. However, um, however, it still remained below these two key important levels of ours. Uh, so on the upside, we have this uh, eight, 10,820 zone that we're looking for a break off. And to be honest, looking at this, that it continues to move kind of sideways. To be honest, this upside line is no longer needed uh, because now we're just going to mainly focus on this level here, the 10,820, because a nice good pop above this would confirm a forthcoming higher high. And yep, uh, higher levels could be met, but we will only target uh, either the 100 EMA here or the uh, the 200 EMA here on the on the daily charts. So on chart. Um, so, uh, in terms of the downside, still the same idea remains as, as I've mentioned this week. We need to see a drop below the 10,000 zone in order to kind of, let's say, consider some deeper extensions to the downside. So, basically, not much has changed here. So, the same rules apply. Uh, FTSE 100, also similar story here, although we also closed, uh, we saw this one closing in the positive territory. However, it still remained below this, this barrier right here, the 5,895 zone. And in a way, we need to see a nice good pop above this in order to uh, get comfortable with uh, a further move higher. So for now, we're just observing this one. Uh, it's kind of stuck here. It's moving sideways. So not much action uh, we're seeing here right now. So keep your eyes on this one. And in terms of the downside, we still need to see a drop below that 5,500 level in order to get comfortable with lower areas. 
Now gold. Um, gold uh, managed to close yesterday above this uh, 1723 territory and you can see that today it's back to this level um, and it's kind of this level now is acting as a good area of support. Now just to, let me remind you that this is the uh, the high of the uh, 12th of December uh, 2012. So basically 12, 12, 12. So uh, this is the high of that day. Um, we are seeing that this, like I said, this um, uh, this commodity is currently kind of getting a nice hold up here. So if this uh, area continues to hold, then yep, we may see a bit of a rebound here, a move back up here towards these uh, towards these highs uh, that we saw here back in in around mid April, uh, around the uh, 1747 zone. So uh, that's currently the highest point of April. But it would be quite interesting to see if we can actually uh, by the end of this month create a new one but again for now we're going to be very careful and cautious um, if this pair so, uh, sorry the pair if this uh, precious metal some, somehow drops back below the 170304 zone now this is where we will aim for the downside again and uh, well we will aim for these lower levels, uh, we'll aim for the 1680 zone, uh, a break of which could lead to towards the 1645. But again, we would need to see this one dropping back below the 170403 zone. So keep your eyes on that one. Um, W, oh, sorry, w, Brent Oil. Now here, uh, the situation is very, very tricky. First of all, uh, because again, although yeah, we are seeing a bit of a recovery here. Um, it's struggling to overcome this uh, 21.64 zone. So yesterday it closed um, just kind of bang on on it. And uh, well, I mean, today we are seeing a bit of a push higher. So it could be a good sign. However, don't get me wrong today, guys, it's Friday. And uh, as you know, as you have seen this in the past, sometimes Fridays are quite tricky because we might see some one way traffic. And in a way, the um, of course, don't get me wrong, it might be to the upside or to the downside um, but again that's why for now we're very careful because with the previous two days we're kind of really with um, as you can see with they have a low body so basically it kind of opened uh, it, it closed where it opened almost um, so that's why it would be I mean today given it's Friday I mean it could be a tricky one. It could be a day with a huge uh, body here. Speaking from the technical uh, side, of course, uh, with the candle, the daily candle might be with a huge body. So um, that's why let's be very careful with this one. The way you could look at it is if you um, keep your eyes on the um, the high of yesterday, uh, which is roughly around here. So the 23.20, uh, a nice good pop above this would confirm a forthcoming higher high and yep, higher levels could be met. Uh, but if this suddenly starts dropping lower and uh, falls below the uh, below the low of yesterday, which is um, around uh, roughly around the uh, 21 to 20 point uh, 10 zone, then well, I mean, we could uh, consider some downside. But again, for now, guys, be very careful here. Like I said, it's Friday. Don't try to risk it too much. And uh, yep, let's continue observing the price action because for now, um, it is very interesting. It is very tricky at the same time. So let's see if where this will end up going to because again, I, I, I would say this is the one of the, the one of those times when uh, to be honest, I do not do not have a clear view on this one because it's fi it's truly 50-50 right now. Um, all on one hand, we have a, a weekly candle basically, which re as you can see retraced back down nicely. But to be honest, given like I said, given that it's Friday, uh, it might drift back down again. Um, and well, I mean, this could uh, bring the uh, the commodity back to the back to these lows here that we, it, it had uh, it had reached this week. So, but again, that's the um, that's a bit of speculation. That's a bit of, to be honest, a bit of guessing here. So um, that's why, guys, I would probably stick to these two levels that I've just mentioned: the high of yesterday and the low.
low of yesterday. So if we get a break above one of these, either above the, sorry, a break, a break above the high of yesterday, and then yes, we will consider some higher levels. Uh, but if it drops below the low of yesterday, then yep, we will be very careful and target some downside. So that's the only kind of suggestion I could give. Uh, but even then, guys, be very careful because we might have false breakouts as well. So that's, and again, with oil, it's very, very uh, tricky at the moment. Um, Ethereum. So I talked about this one yesterday and basically now uh, I've talked about this level here, the 189 zone. So the uh, the barrier got broken yesterday, um, but the, the crypto still closed the day below it. So this morning we are seeing a nice push higher again. We are seeing a, a, almost a test of that area. Um, we're very close and actually we did already test that area this morning, but uh, it, again, it held the price from moving higher. So uh, what we need here, as I said previously, we need to see a nice daily close above this in order to kind of get a little bit more comfortable with higher areas. So for now, let's keep an eye on this one. In terms of the downside, it's a very conservative approach and we will wait for a drop below the 166 zone before considering uh, a larger extension to the downside. Um, AUD and ZD. So um, here, the, um, I talked about this level here this week, um, the 1.0625 zone. Um, what I was saying that if we get a nice good close, a daily close above it, then yes, we may see uh, this one pushing further north. However, as you can see, yesterday we had a nice a break above this territory, but uh, it, cre it formed a new high for, for this week. And uh, yep, uh, then it kind of sold off and today this morning we are seeing and we, we saw another test of this territory and then kind of it, it drifted back down again so basically it is kind of struggling with this barrier um, however don't get me wrong if we somehow do get a push above it we will keep an eye on the uh, close on the daily close and if we see something like that then yes we will get a little bit more comfortable with higher levels and uh, in a way, actually, let me just jump into a four-hour chart quickly. Uh, you can see, oh, as always, I mean, as well, you can see that neither even of the four-hour candles managed to close above this territory. So, which means that, in a way, we could start uh, considering some higher levels if we get a close of a four-hour candle. So, that's why, guys, for now, probably... Um, Keep your eyes on this barrier, this 1.0625. If we do get at least a four hour candle close, yes, we will start considering some upside, but uh, of course all eyes will be on the on the daily candle. So yep, guys, keep your eyes on this one. Very interesting pair, very interesting developments. So let's see how this is gonna play out. Now, uh, jumping into another one, GBPUSD here. Now, this is not much, not much happening here. Basically, it's still working according to plan that I've talked about uh, in around mid this week, uh, where I was saying that in a way the pair might drift a little bit higher it could find some resistance near the 21 EMA here on the daily chart so which is, which is shown as the yellow line you probably cannot really see it very clearly um, let me just maybe make it uh, a little bit orange maybe this way it will be easier to view um, so there we go so this is um, this is that 21 EMA here um, and uh, it kind of continues to act as a good area of resistance and it continues to do that uh, same thing today as well. So it, this little uh, move higher could still be seen as a temporary correction uh, before another leg of selling. And as I've mentioned pr uh, previously this week, this is the target for now for us, uh, the 1.2195. That's the lowest point of October 2019. And then if we do reach this level, then we'll take it from there. In terms of the upside, we need to see a push above the 1.2485 and then we could consider some higher areas. GBP Euro. Um, here, this is a little, slightly different situation, although the pound is a little bit on the weaker side, still uh, it's, it's slightly stronger than the euro, uh, to which I, can, I will get to in a few minutes. Um, now, here the situation still remains the same. We need to see a push above this barrier, the uh, 1.1515, in order to get comfortable, because as I've mentioned previously uh, this week, uh, as you can see, the pair is kind of getting a hold up near this uh, this uh, 100 EMA and the 200 EMA, which which both coincide right now uh, on the daily chart, of course, and this kind of creates a very strong area of resistance. If this gets broken, 
and then the pair travels above the 1.1515 zone, then this is where more uh, more buyers could be joining in because this is basically currently the highest point of uh, April. But if that gets broken, then well, uh, this month, of course, then yep, a new high for April could be established. Um, in terms of the downside, we need to see a drop below this key area of support from which, as you can see this week, the pair reversed back to the upside, the 1.1305. And then we could consider some deeper extensions to the downside. So for now, uh, of course, the downside is slightly off the table. However, if the uh, this if this these two EMAs continue to provide decent resistance, we could see another slide. But if these two EMAs get broken, well, I mean, this is where the bulls could start coming in. USD JPY. So th again, not going to spend too much time on this because the same idea remains here. I've talked about this one this week, and. Um, Basically, we need to see um, either a drop through the 106.92 zone, which is a key area of support here, in order to aim for lower levels, because for now it's just kind of moving sideways, it's not doing anything, um, or we need to see a push above the 108.08 level, that's at least a push above that, in order to kind of consider some higher levels, but uh, still the more comfortable area for us is around the 109.38 zone, which is the high of the uh, 6th of April. So. Long story short, basically, guys, um, for now, we're just neutral and uh, observing these uh, two levels, the 108.08 on the upside and the 106.92 on the downside. Uh, USD CAD. Now, here, the situation is a little bit difficult. Now, uh, USD CAD kind of drifted lower. Canadian dollar strengthened uh, yesterday a little bit um, due to, of course, the oil, uh, due to oil rising slightly. However, uh, given the tricky situation with oil, as I've mentioned uh, earlier, uh, we will remain very careful with USD CAD as well. So if you, oil starts popping higher, we could see this one drifting back down here. Um, however, as I've mentioned previously, in order for us to get comfortable with the downside, we need to see a drop below this territory right here. Uh, not, the, not this one, but right here this one um the 1.3856 mark mark this is what we're going to be looking at in order to aim for lower levels in terms of the upside still the same idea remains we would like to see a strong move above the 1.48 uh one well, sorry 1.4182 in order to uh, consider some higher levels but to be honest um, somehow it looks that we will have to reevaluate re this barrier because um, in a way we're, it's actually not really clear enough. So um, probably what I'm going to do here is we're, I'm going to stick to the 1.42 zone roughly, um, roughly around here guys, roughly uh, near, near the high of uh, yesterday. So uh, because again that level was not really uh, clear enough because it got violated recently. So yes, let me just reiterate that this. So the uh, the upside scenario will be for us uh, for us from around the 1.42 mark. So yeah, that probably could be a little bit of a, a more safer game here. So yes, so keep your eyes on the 1.42. Uh, if we get a nice push above this, then yep, there it could, there is a possibility for this one to drift higher. But we will reevaluate everything then again. Uh, Eurocad here, the similar situation, uh, but with this pair, uh, there is a bit more weakness in the euro, so there, that's why there is a possibility for this one to drift lower. Uh, the pair is near its key area of support right now, near the 1.5123. Um, if we get a drop below this, then yep, further declines are possible, but to be honest, what we're going to aim for then will be this little territory, the high of the uh, 3rd of March, which is around the 1.4978, um, and uh, slightly above that, we do have the uh, the, the the 100 EMA here, so um, which also could provide a bit of support. But in basically, long story short, this is going to be our target if we get um, if we get a drop below this level, below this uh, the low of uh, the current lowest point of April, uh, which is around the 1.5123 zone. So keep your eyes on this one. In terms of the upside, um, the way you could look at it is if you get a push above the low of 17th of April, which is around the 1.52. 
uh, 1.5213 zone, roughly around there, then, yep, we could consider some higher levels, and uh, maybe we could go back to the highs of, to the high of this week, which is around the 1.5455 zone, so keep your eyes on this one. And finally, Euro USD. So, uh, th I talked about this one yesterday, and, well, to be honest, I talked about this one all the time, uh, but um, what I wanted to say here is that Although yesterday we did get a break of this key area of support that I talked about, the 1.0777, it still closed kind of above it a little bit, as I, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, no, it closed slightly below it. So, um, so that's why we're seeing a nice push lower today. Um, it's already drifting. Uh, yep, it's already drifting south. So. And that's, of course, a good indication for the bears. Um, to get a little bit more comfortable, probably you could keep an eye on the low of yesterday, uh, which is around the 1.0756. A nice good drop below this would just con just would confirm uh, further declines. So that's why for now, guys, uh, yep, continue monitoring this one. It's it's getting closer to this. As you can see, it's already trying to make its way there. But if it, get, if it gets a break below this, then yes, we will aim for lower areas. Um, um, for us to consider the the upside here, um, probably let me just jump back into a four hour chart. Um, for us to consider the upside, as I've mentioned previously, we need to see uh, a good push above this downside line and ideally a push above the uh, the 200 EMA here on the four hour chart. So that's why, although I do understand we're missing out on a bit of a space here, but to be honest, we'd rather be safe than sorry because with the upside, it's very tricky. It could go higher, find resistance near this downside line and sell off again. So that's why just to, out of, you know, uh, kind of pure technical uh, analysis here, I mean, we will just wait for a break of this downside line taken from the high of the 30th of March and then we have uh, a push above the 200 EMA here on the four hour chart could do the trick for more buyers. So guys, I hope you found it useful and uh, thank you very much for sticking around and watching until the end. If you want to join me later on at my traders uh, tea time or catch my video, which is which going to be around 13, 15 GMT time. So, yep, uh, catch my video then and then, uh, yep, we'll take it from there. We'll see what the market is, uh, kind of uh, what the market did during this period right now before the, tr the traders tea time. And then, yep, we'll see how it might end the week. And, uh, yep, that would be quite interesting. So thank you very much, guys, for watching and listening. Have a wonderful trading day, and I'll see you later. Thank you very much, and bye-bye.